Hello and welcome to all the men and women of the West. I'm Joe, here with me is my co-host Stan. Hello and greetings. Today on Red Nails, we're dealing with chapters four and five. And these two chapters are pretty good. Chapter four sees Yasala, the servant woman of Tuskela, bending over Valeria, only to be seized, and for Valeria to whip and torture Yasala. Harsh, but Yasala kind of deserves it. I was going to say question, but okay. Yasala escapes while Valeria Valeria acts like an idiot. It was a sloppy moment on her part. Yasala cries out, and we ultimately get Conan and Valeria in the next chapter fighting side by side. In this chapter, we finally see what Valeria is capable of as a fighter. She does a fantastic job. I honestly didn't think she, when I first read that scene, that she could hold her own alongside Conan, but she actually does. That is very impressive. In terms of mythology slash fantasy, I can only think of one other female character that might be able to do that. Eowyn from Lord of the Rings. That's because Eowyn is able to take on the Witch King of Angmar and was pretty much the best fighter Rohan had at their disposal. Because Conan is on his own and Valyria holds her own there. That, that's just, that's one of the coolest moments in the story. And the problem is she actually is seized by maybe not battle rage, but a kind of battle joy. Conan goes after the Sultalank people and the last he sees of Valyria is her following a servant of Olmec into another room and Conan arrives in the hall of the rival tribe which is richly decorated and they find the corpse of the crawler with Yanath going insane and Conan forced to kill Topol who admits that Olmec basically ordered the two men to kill Conan so that he can have Valyria because she's gorgeous and all the men want her. Techotl is dying but confess well he's the one who confesses that Olmec seized Valyria. It turns out that Olmec informs Valyria that he's had Conan killed which breaks Valyria's heart. That's where we're gonna leave you off at least in terms of the events with Valeria thinking Conan dead, Conan convinced that Conan is not dead because he isn't, and Olmec thinking Conan is dead and Tuskela thinking Conan is dead. So most people think Conan is dead because they don't know him very well. Except maybe Valeria, who knows him very well, but has a moment of weakness. She's not exactly in fighting condition because she is a little wounded from the previous battle, only a little to one leg. She's later able to prove her metal once again and fight again in chapter seven. But what did you think of these two chapters? It's impressive of that battle scene or two and we see a lot about how Valyria thinks in battle how mm -hmm. she approaches things like a uh, wrecking ball yeah that's generally her solution to problems she's capable like I, I, I have no other word to describe her there are times where if she were to just ask Conan for help a lot of problems would have been averted and resolved earlier but she approaches everything like a wrecking ball mm -hmm. she's impulsive and hot headed and hot tempered but ultimately she does follow Conan's lead. She does. When she gets caught up in the heat of the moment, she gets impulsive. She's also far less experienced than Conan as an adventurer. And here we see why Conan is Conan. Yeah, in that he is essentially smarter than him. He is. And even she knows it. But she's plucky and resourceful in her own way, but nowhere near as brilliant or as capable as him. I, I, and they form such a great team. I think it, somewhere in the chapter, Valeria comments that she's surprised how light Conan is on his feet for someone his size because he's basically built like Alex Louis Armstrong from Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. He could run around as quietly as Batman. Well, Conan's about what? Six foot something. He's taller than Batman. I do know that much. I think. These chapters also show how Tuskela and Olmec perceive Valyria. She's an object to be devoured. She's there to slake their hungers. They don't regard her as a human being. Whereas Conan views her as a worthy partner of sorts. That showcases a, a great difference between them. He regards Valyria as a woman, which is far better than how Olmec and Tuskela regard her, which is, like I said, some uh, like a piece of fruit to satisfy their hunger, which that is one of the key differences Howard paints between these different people. Olmec and Tuskela are civilized people, and they don't regard Valyria as even being human. Conan is not a civilized human being, but he regards Valyria as a human being. There was a study done, and apparently in a lot of places around the world, the equal rights stemmed more from the countryside in some countries than from the cities. So there's a world of a difference here between civilized and uncivilized people. Conan treating Valyria with far more respect and human dignity than the two city 
slickers, so to speak, is no big surprise, and it fits with how Howard regards society and civilization versus the barbarian. As to Olmec, though, he is a bit of a darker version of Conan in some minor ways. I would almost compare him more to this Shadow King archetype, because the Shadow King is, in some cases, either a very insecure fool or a tyrant in the mold of Scar from Lion King. And Olmec acts a lot like Scar from Lion King. The difference is he is not as fierce a character as Scar, because Scar is un unmatchable as a tyrant. Tuskela is a bit of the Shadow Queen archetype, or I should say the Chrome archetype. Tuskela is also a lich. For those who love Halloween stuff, well guess what folks? Happy Halloween. Red Nails is a very horror-esque story. Well, with, how, with this tribe, and with the fact that Tuskela is a lich, it fits. Any other thoughts on this? I think we've covered everything. So don't forget to smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were Conan smashing his enemies to itty bitty pieces.